I want to educate you on JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And this did grow out of JavaScript, which as you know, is extremely popular scripting language still today on the interweb. So what is it? Well, it's a syntax for storing and retrieving data. Have you done anything with AWS? Have you maybe fired up an AWS command line session on your local computer so that you could interact with the Amazon Web Services up in the cloud? Well, if you've ever done that, you will find that the default data format, that the information you've requested from AWS, it is sent to you in the CLI in JSON format. Okay, so it's lightweight. What does that mean? Well, there's not a lot going on as you're about to see. I always consider when you hear JSON is lightweight, I always consider that to mean like, there's not a lot of overhead associated with it as far as special characters we have to get in there and things like that. And again, that helps it to be readable. It helps it to be parsed. It also helps it though, just from a learning perspective and an ease of use perspective. It's self-describing. As you're going to see, we use what are called name and value pairings in it. So we're, we're very used to that where there's like a key and a value or name and a value. So it uses that nice structure, which really goes a long way to allowing you to see right when you look at the JSON, what it is doing. And then it's independent, meaning it doesn't have to be used with like Java. You know, JavaScript came out of Java and then this JSON came out of JavaScript. So you might be thinking like, oh my gosh, this is forcing me into specific programming languages and development platforms and things like that. No, not at all, uh, because everyone's accepting JSON nowadays. And so you could have the application written in something totally different from Java, and then you could have the data sucked into this application in a JSON format just fine. We're going to go through about four or five steps here to get this built. And then uh, I will make sure you're aware of the data types and I think most importantly, how they would be formatted. So we said it's based on name value pairs and the field name is going to be in double quotes. So notice I have a field name here of street and notice it's in the double quotes. Then there is a colon and then there is the value. So street, main, simple. A question that you get here is why the double quotes on main? Why there are double quotes on main? This data type right here is a string and strings, as we often know, needs to be enclosed in the quotes. So that's why we have the quotes on both. By the way, is there flexibility here? The answer is no. That's why we've got to learn this precisely. And that's why we're excited by the fact that there is not a lot of overhead. When we are creating a JSON object, and a JSON object is typically going to have a bunch of these name and value pairings, we need to separate those data entries with a comma. Now notice ident. The ident is 1204 in quotes. So that is going to have that interpreted as a string. This is one of those age old challenges in programming, right? Where do you, you have to stop and think. Do I want the identity value in as a number or do I want it in as a string? Well, it all depends on what you have to do with the identity value. A lot of times when you have numerics that are being used as an identifier, you want them in as strings like I show here 
because the types of things that you're going to do to those strings are perfect for strings. It doesn't make sense to put it in as a number because you're not going to be doing any kind of algebraic manipulations or anything like that with that value. What we are sending typically into these applications and what we're pulling out are what are called JSON objects. So a JSON object is a unit of JSON values inside it. And notice it is the curly braces for these objects. All right, so we've got the quotes, we've got the colon, We've got the comma, and now we've got the curly braces. Uh, just to tell you, there's going to be five special characters, and that would help you, I think, in the exam environment. Just to remember, like right away, that there's five of these unique ingredients that we add to the information, and then if you can remember those five, I think that's going to really help you in how they were, are used. Let's talk about that final component that we might have. And this is a two for one because this is actually, well, it's a three for one slide because we're actually gonna get uh, three different things taught here. The first thing that I'm teaching here and the one, you know, that was the primary concern is now we are introducing a square bracket. And what is the square bracket for? Well, in JSON, the square bracket is for holding multiple values. And we have, anytime we have multiple values, we call that an array. The second thing that we're learning on this slide the fact that we can have a data type of an array. The third thing that we are teaching on this slide is a very common format for displaying your JSON. What do we do uh, typically when we are displaying our JSON object? Well, it gets ugly all on one big line that's gonna wrap, so we like to break it up. Notice right here, we don't get to skip anything. There's the opening curly bracket. We haven't skipped anything, even though we are presenting the JSON in this manner. We have the opening bracket, curly bracket. There is our first field name of ident. Notice, by the way, we had these quotes needed there. And then what we have is our value the quotes here are because we are using a string. And then we said we need the comma between the data. And notice that isn't skipped here. So we have that comma separating that first entry from the second entry. Now the second entry, the name is routers. And then we haven't skipped our colon. But then instead of having just this one string in its quotes, we have three strings being stored in the field of routers. Notice we use commas once again in between those data points and the big point that we mentioned, the curly, uh, the square brackets for the array. Remember now, all of this could have been on one line if we wanted it to be, but we don't put it all on one line, typically for readability. The next thing that we wanna discuss, as I promised, is let's just run through these data types and what they're gonna look like for us in JSON. Now we already covered one, so I didn't build another slide on it. It is the array. Okay, so just realize the array, the square brackets, and those multiple entries. That's an array. Here's a string. We've talked about these. Big thing about the string is we're going to use the quotes. Excellent. The next type we could have is a number. And just as you might guess, the number is going to be input in the JSON with no quotes. 
So here I have a field name of packets, and I have a number inside of 30. All right, here we have a fun one. Notice what's happening. We are taking a JSON object and we are putting it in as the JSON data. Curly brackets to start. The name of the field is SW1 data. And then we have a JSON object with a field name of number and a value of 30 that is stored in that position. Interesting that we can have objects as a data type. And then we have Booleans. So a Boolean is going to be true or false. No quotes. We have sale and then we have the value of true as opposed to false. If you messed up and you put quotes around the word true, now the parser of this JSON says, oh, okay, there's a value called, uh, there's a field called sale and it's filled with a string that says true. Watch out for that. You wouldn't get an error in the syntax. It would just be interpreted very differently. And then finally, what if we don't have anything to stick in there? So maybe the JSON is being built from a form that the user is filling out and they don't have a middle name. And so the middle name isn't required in our form. It's an optional field. And sure enough, they didn't fill it out. Well, in the JSON that gets created as a result of that, it would be the null data type, which just spells out null in that value area. So the very last thing I wanted to show you on JSON is how you would want to practice this. And how I think you would want to practice this would be to get yourself a nice editor. You can see installed on this Windows machine right now, I have a uh, program that is completely free and it's called Atom a hackable text editor for the 21st century. You don't have to use this one by any means. I'm not saying that, of course not. I'm just saying there's a lot out there. Find one that you love and stick with it and take advantage of it. What you can do in a tool like this is you can go and you can create a new file and notice we can right away just go and file save as, I'll call this test.json, save it. Now, what is going to happen? Why I'm so excited about doing my practice inside an editor like this is that it now sees that I'm dealing with a JSON file. So what it's going to do is it is going to give us syntax help as we practice. So let's try and do this right, out of memory. Open curly brace. Now, you see what I love about having an editor? It just saved me a little bit of typing. It automatically put in the closing brace. Hey, thank you, good people of Adam. And now I'm gonna do a sample value. Let me do a field name. Gave me the green quotes there, I like it. The green indicating there's no problem with the syntax at this point. I'll go ahead and say like router underscore name. All right. Now, what did we say goes between the field and the data? A colon. And then this will be a string. And I'll say this is uh, the classic R1. And then what did we say is going to separate our data, a comma, and then I'll carriage return. And how about we do, oh, I'll just make stuff up here, okay. We'll do version and then a colon. And we'll say that the version is a string and it's like uh, 
you know, enterprise dash K nine dash sec or whatever. We do a comma. Let's do an array. I'll say this is interfaces and then I'll do a colon and then I will do square brackets and I will do strings and that'll be gigabit zero slash zero and then comma. I don't think we need the spaces, but it, it's gonna let us know. In fact, let me get rid of the spaces and, and that'll allow us to test this. I don't see it complaining about that syntax. That's great. So you probably would wanna use spaces though, right? And I usually do because notice what it's doing for us. It is improving the readability a bit. So you would wanna do anything for your eye that does improve the readability. So then I'll say, all right, this is gonna be gigabit zero slash one. And then we need our comma. And then we're gonna do one more. Let's do managed. This is a Boolean. So I will say true. More color coding there, I love it. And then, oh, one more, can't help myself. We'll just say CPU cores or something silly. Oh, and now notice, okay, great. You see what just happened? I made an error. And so this text is not being color coded. And the error I quickly see is I forgot my colon. I draw, I mean, my uh, comma. I drop in my comma and it tells me, yeah, you're good again. So what's really happening here is we're seeing a bit of parsing that this tool is doing to make sure our syntax is cool. And I don't know about all of you, but I just decided how I want the readability. And that is, I don't want spaces between the colon. That looks weird to me but I do like the space that I use for the comma separating the data values. So you'll, you'll develop your own personal preferences on that kind of thing. And you have a little bit of flexibility with that in here. Watch out though, we will get to YAML and things like that. And you have way less flexibility on this kind of stuff. Anyways, as you might guess, I wanted to demonstrate a number for CPU cores, a number value. So there you go. There is our JSON file and we can do our file save and then we could use this JSON file. I really wanted to show how a sophisticated editor like Adam can really help you when you're working with your JSON to make sure that you've got it mastered.